What's up guys, Kyle here again and today we're gonna go over my five favorite overdrives in 2022. Let's do it! All right, hope you guys are doing great out there today. My name is Kyle and if this is your first time here at my channel, what I do is I take awesome high gain amplifiers, overdrives, guitars, cabinets, speakers, pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if that's something you're into, consider hitting that like button on the way out if you like this video and subscribing so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right guys, so it is officially January of 2022. New year, new me. Not really, I'm still doing the same old thing, which is boosting my high gain amps with lots of different overdrives. Now you guys are always asking me, what's my favorite overdrive? What overdrive do I recommend for certain amps and why? So I figured, why don't I make a video and update it yearly of my favorite overdrives on the market, what it is I like about them and what amps that I think that they work well for. So for this video, I have picked five overdrives that I really just find myself liking and using more than any of the other ones that I own. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you through those five overdrives, show you what I like about them and give you some quick sound samples. All right guys, number five on the list is the KHDK Ghoul Screamer Overdrive. This is essentially a modded tube screamer with a bunch of different tweakable values on it. You've got a bass switch, a high switch, a body switch, and two different compression switches. Now me typically, I will tell you guys, I'm not a fan of having too many options, too many switches to mess with because I end up dialing through things and spending more time messing around trying to find the best settings on everything as opposed to just plugging in and playing. But on this pedal, I really feel like it is very, very easy to kind of figure out which settings work best. And you can kind of fine tune this pedal to not only the guitar that you're using, but to the amp as well. Because not only do you get basically different EQ characteristics with these switches, but the compression switches really lend themselves well to certain amps. If you want less compression from the pedal, Pedal, leave it on the first setting and it doesn't add as much compression. So if you're playing through something like a 5150 or an angle that already has a lot of gain, a lot of compression, I can leave that compression switch up. It doesn't compress as much going into the front end and just gives me a nice, clean, clear, smooth Tube Screamer style circuit. But say I'm plugging into something like a VHT or a Splon where I need some more compression or, or a, more compression might be a little bit welcome depending on what guitar I'm playing. I can flip that switch down into the two and really fine tune the amount of compression the pedal adds to the front end of the amplifier. Now I don't just like this pedal because of the switches and the functionality that it adds. I really just think that it sounds Sounds great. This is a very clean, very clear, articulate sounding overdrive. It doesn't muddy up any frequencies. It doesn't add too much of any frequencies. It's just a really nicely balanced, good sounding overdrive. And it is actually the first overdrive that knocked my MXR M77 off my board in over seven years. For me, that's saying a lot because I tried a lot of drives to see what else I would like better than the M77 and nothing really worked for me until I got this thing. So let's hear it. All right, guys, number four on the list is 
The Walrus Ages Five State Overdrive. This thing really does a number of things very, very well. And it also does something that a lot of overdrives don't really do, which is gives you a lot of options. Now, there are a couple of pedals out there that do have multiple different like diode clipping options and everything, but most of those also just give you a tone knob. They don't give you a bass and a treble and they don't give you a blend knob, which is what this dry knob is. The further you have it turned down, the less character the pedal is going to impart on your signal and it's just going to add gain and clipping and you can adjust the bass and treble. But the further that you dial the dry knob up, the more it's going to start to flavor your signal going into the amp. So you can decide how much you want of that flavor of whatever particular setting that you're currently on on the pedal imparted on your signal going into the amp and really fine tune the voicing that you're getting from this pedal. Not only that, the five different modes are vastly different from each other. So there are five very different sounds coming out of this pedal, which you can apply to different amps, different guitars. It gives you a lot of options to kind of match it up, not only for your tone, but for the gear that you're playing. Because as we know, different guitar amps take different drives differently. How many more times can I put different in a sentence? On top of that, the Mode 3, which is kind of where I tend to live on this overdrive because I like it so much, has an absolutely ridiculous amount of output. This thing is so hot that you can boost a JCM 800 in stock form into a high gain territory. And it's not gonna be overly compressed or overly gained out from clipping because I can turn this dry knob all the way down and really all I'm doing is hitting the front end of the amp super hard with a very loud signal and then I can fine tune the bass response and the amount of treble coming through as well in order to really juice an amp that needs a lot of help in the gain department. So the JCM 800 really benefits from this. A PV Butcher benefits from this. My Badlander on the Crunch channel really benefits from this because these things are like twice as hot as a normal Tube Screamer. It's just a really versatile boost. I really enjoy the voicing that it gives on the third mode, but I also love that it gives me four other different modes to kind of tailor to whatever amp that I'm using at the time. So this is a winner in my book and this makes number four on my list. So let's hear it. Okay guys, number three on my list. This is a fairly new addition to my collection, but it has pretty much been on the boost board and all of my demos since I got it. And that is the Electric Eye Mud Killer. This pedal really is kind of what I always wanted out of pedals like the Horizon Precision Drive or the Fortin 33, where they're kind of meant to take a really fat or dark sounding amp and really just kind of tighten it up and add some 
modern mids to it to get it to grind, to get it, those nice palm mutes and everything out of it. Well, this kind of does the same thing, but it's not nearly as extreme to start with. Meaning, this mud control right here, if you turn it all the way down like this, I would say it cuts about the same amount of bass as a regular tube screamer. But the more that you turn it up, the more that low shelf, which is what this mud killer knob is, starts to filter out those low frequencies. And I don't know what's going on inside the pedal, but it also seems to focus them a little bit more because this pedal can really take amps like a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier or my Mezza Barba M0 Overdrive or an SLO that have kind of not the tightest low end in the world. Obviously, the Mesa Boogie doesn't have a tight low end at all, but it can take a looser amp or an amp that has a lot of low end frequencies going on and really just kind of tighten them all up and make them like super, super punchy. I have never tried another pedal that makes the low end as punchy as this mud killer. And that's why I really like it because I like the tight percussive palm mutes and this thing does that in spades and that tight control really allows you again to tailor the amount of low end taken out depending on the amp that it is that you're using. Now on top of that, you've got a couple options on this pedal which kind of expand its versatility as well. You've got a clipping switch here so you can completely take all the clipping off on the pedal. So a lot of people don't like that they're over overdrives add clipping to their signal. They just want to kind of boost it and tailor the tone without having additional clipping or additional gain from the pedal. Well, you can do that with this thing because you can turn the clipping off and it's just sending out a clean signal, but it's still giving you the tonal adjustment. It's still giving you the mud control adjustment. So that's a nice feature. And then on top of that, you've got a compression switch down here, which allows you to basically reduce or turn the compression off that the pedal will impart by turning it on. So therefore, again, you can really kind of take the compression and the clipping out of this pedal to kind of just make it a, a transparent, clean boost. The tone doesn't add quite as much of an aggressive upper mid as say a Tube Screamer or an SD-1 does. It's a little bit more of a modern and smooth upper mid, which again makes it a little bit more unique than a lot of the other overdrives out there. But I tend to like it, especially if I'm tuning down lower. It just kind of cleans everything up, focuses the low end, gives me the mids where I want them. So yeah, really dig this pedal. Let's hear what it can do. All right, guys, number two on my favorite overdrives list of 2022. This is an overdrive that I used for years and years, and I tried to find other overdrives to dethrone it, and I just could never find anything that I liked as much as this drive up until very recently, and even still, I find myself using this on a lot of amps depending on what I'm trying to go for. So this is, so this is the MXR M77 Custom Badass Modified Overdrive. One of the first things that drew me to this pedal when it first came out was the 100 hertz bass control knob. At the time, I was always wanting a little bit more low end out of my guitar after boosting it with something like a Tube Screamer because that's pretty much what I started out on was a cheap Joyo Tube Screamer copy. And that was what I had for quite a while, I'd say a year before this thing came out. And I always found that it just took away too much low end for my taste at the time. So I was really interested to try this thing because of the 100 Hertz knob. And on top of that, it has the bump switch. So this is a switchable low and low mid frequency bump you turn it on, you get fuller lows, fuller low mids. You turn it off, it's kind of more like a like an SD1 almost. And then you've got your tone, your gain, and your output. So really these two 
controls here are what make this pedal unique. But over the years, I found myself liking when an overdrive cuts a lot of bass for when I'm tuned down lower or for when I'm playing through certain amps and just having the ability to dial that bass back and kind of clean up the low end, especially on something like say a Mesa dual rectifier again. This pedal works really well when you turn that bump switch off, you dial that 100 hertz off and all of a sudden you're getting some tight kind of clanky percussive tones out of your rectifier that aren't really possible with something like just a Tube Screamer or an SD1. I have also found that this pedal is less aggressive in the high mids. It kind of imparts more of a round type of mid bump than something like say an SD1 or a Tube Screamer. But again, if you want it to get more aggressive, you just turn that tone knob up and it kind of brightens things up in the upper mids. But I've really just found that this pedal is smooth enough and it gives you enough control to work on just about any amp. And I've always personally liked the tone that it imparted on whatever amp that I was boosting. So this has been a staple on my board since about 2012. And again, I found a lot of cool overdrives that I really like, especially since the start of this channel. I've got and I could try some really great stuff out, but I still find myself reaching for this overdrive very often. And I think that says something considering all the awesome stuff that I have gotten to try recently and all the great offerings that are now available to us through the, you know, the boutique pedal boom. There are so many options out there. There are so many great builders building great things, but you know, you just can't deny when something is great. And the MXR badass modified overdrive is a great overdrive. Let's hear it. Alright guys, finally, for the number one overdrive on my list of best overdrives in 2022, I don't think that this is going to come as any surprise to any of you guys out there because I talk about how much I love this pedal on pretty much a weekly basis on this channel, and that is the Deadweld Duality DX. Now, I'm sure most of you guys are already familiar with everything that this pedal can do and what it's about, but I'm going to go ahead and go over it again because... I like this pedal and I like talking about it. So the Deadweld Duality DX. So the Deadweld Duality DX is probably one of the most versatile and one of the most innovative drive pedals on the market at this point. You have two different circuits available in this pedal as well as individual gate controls. This has built-in noise gates that come after the boost section of the pedal. So it completely cuts off any noise that the pedal may impart when you're not playing. And you've also got the ability to stack those two different circuits, combine them, all the controls still work. And then you have a gate here that gates the red channel as well. And you have the ability to hook this thing up via the four cable method and use it as a gate for more than just your guitar signal. So, I mean, I can't imagine another pedal that's gonna come and dethrone this thing anytime soon. There is so much functionality in this. And not only that, a lot of the time when people try to pack too much into a single item, it does a little bit of everything but it doesn't excel at anything this pedal excels at everything that it sets out to accomplish the modded tube screamer side sounds incredible the gate on the modded tube screamer side is literally impeccable this is the only pedal that was on my touring pedal board for Bushido Code when I went out on the road recently and I did not miss having anything else on my board other than a tuner it was literally this and a tuner Every night, my signal was gated perfectly. I was getting everything that I needed from this pedal. It really just simplifies your pedal board and makes things super easy, especially if you're out on the road. There's nothing to troubleshoot. And then on the other side of the pedal, you've got the blue channel, which is a TC integrated preamp style boost with your bass, your treble, and your volume control.
controls. I have a couple different TC preamp style pedals on hand and while those are great, I just find that this one still sounds the best to my ear and you get a built-in gate just for that channel and the ability to switch back and forth between the green and the blue channels. So that is awesome, but on top of all that, you can combine both channels into the red channel on this pedal, basically stacking the boost, giving you more output and combining kind of like the best frequencies of both. And it doesn't become this crazy noisy mess. It just, it works so well. It's incredible how well it works. And you still have your tone control in the middle. You still have your bass and your treble controls. And then you can fine tune the output. I mean, everything still works and you get a gate for that channel as well. So uh, there's just so much functionality in this pedal and every single channel not only sounds good but works exactly as it should. And every single channel has a dedicated gate that you can just set and forget because the gate on this thing is super accurate. It's better than any other external gates that I've used to this point, save for the Deadweld Audio Golem, which is literally the gate circuit inside this pedal inside of its own enclosure. So yeah, there's just not enough good things that I can say about the Deadweld Duality DX. It easily makes the number one spot for my list in 2022 and uh, I can't really see anything displacing it anytime soon. So something tells me we're going to see this at number one for at least the next couple of years. Let's hear what it can do. All right, guys, that is going to complete my list of my five favorite overdrives in 2022. If you are interested in purchasing any of these overdrives, I will make sure to link them down below in the description of this video to make it easy for you guys to find. And hopefully that video helped you if you were between any of these drives or if you were looking for a new overdrive but couldn't find what you were looking for. So I hope that it helped. If you would like to support this channel and what I do here, down in the description of this video are my Sweetwater affiliate links where you click on that link, get yourself something nice from Sweetwater. I get a little kickback and it greatly helps this channel move forward. Or consider becoming a member of my Patreon where I will be picking up a pedal every month to demo on this channel, voted on by my Patreons, and then I will give it away to somebody within the group at the end of the month. So I would appreciate your support that way as well. And finally, consider becoming a member of the Belligerent Amateur Nation by joining my Facebook group and my Discord server. Link down below in the description. Do me a favor, hit that like button on the way out, leave a comment, hit subscribe. Kyle here again. We'll see you guys next time.